hi guys and welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome to open talk with mary if you are a returning subscriber welcome back love so before i get into today's video can you please let me know how i look today i think today i'm glowing guys how do i look i think it's the best that i've ever looked on this platform no i can feel it in my bones i think i'm glowing today except for this pimple i know it's spoiling everything right so please, I don't want to hear anyone saying, oh, her lips are not of the same size, the other one is bigger than the other. No, guys, they are of the same size. It's just not today, right? It's just not today because of this pimple. I've tried to pop it, you know, it's just not popping. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it until it's ready. But yeah, I know it's messing up my mouth. Oh, God. But yeah, okay, it's not why you are here to look at my lips. So please... I don't want to hear anyone talking bad about the size of my lips or the size of my mouth. Okay, so today I'm here to do a video that I should have done a long time ago. That is uh, introducing myself so that you, you guys, you get to know me better, you know, and I also get to know you because I'm pretty sure that you, in your comments, you are also going to share some stuff about you that I can get to know you better. And I want to say thank you so much to those uh, that send me the questions on Instagram and on Facebook. I really, really appreciate them. But... I've got to say, guys, some of them, I found them to be a bit rude and some of them to be a bit sensitive, you know, a bit inconsiderate. But well, this is open talk with Mary. So we say everything as it is. If people ask us questions, we've got to respond, right? That's what it means. Open talk. We say everything as it is. So yeah, let's get right into it. So my full name is Mary Immaculate Holman. I am 27 years old though I feel a little bit older, yeah? I am 27 years old and I've been married for six years. I got married when I was 21. So sorry guys, I'm not available. So yeah, this is my background. I come uh, from a family of six with different mothers, but the same father. So it's like two of us, yeah? It was me and my brother, though my brother has passed away. So now on my mother's side, it's just me. But still, you know, both of my parents have passed away. My mom, my dad and my brother, they've passed away. So I'm just left with half sisters and half brothers. So yeah, this is just the background about me. So now let's get into your own questions. So they are in my phone. So I'm going to be looking at them and then I'm going to answer. Yeah. So let's get right into it. So the first question was, did you tell your abuse story because you want people to feel pity for you? I can tell you guys that when I saw this question, I was really shocked that someone can actually think something like this. You know, when I shared a painful experience, you know, that not only me went through, but there are some women who have gone through it and some women who are still going through toxic relationships. So what I want you to know is I didn't tell my story as a victim. I told my story as a survivor. Of course, I looked uh, emotional because I felt like I let myself down. The red flags were there, but I ignored them. And I think it is not only me, you know, who ignored those red flags. There are some people, even right now as I speak, who can see the red flags, you know, in their relationships, that this relationship is toxic. But we tend to turn a, black, a blind eye, you know, and say, well, he's going to change. Maybe things will get better by tomorrow. So I was emotional because I felt like I had let myself down because of those red flags. They were there, but I chose to ignore them so this is why i was like a bit emotional and maybe you might have taken it like oh she wants pity no but i wanted to encourage someone out there that if i survived you can also survive only when you stand up and say you know what this is not good for me i've got to, you know to leave this man i've got to leave this woman if they are toxic and abusive towards you so that is the reason why i told my story to encourage someone whether you're going through bullying you're going through abuse you are going through anything that other people do to pull you down know that now if you're already down there is a way of getting up and I want you to remember that the problem is not in falling, but it is in falling and failing to rise. Because when you rise, you realize how strong, how brave, how courageous you are. So this is the reason why I told my story to inspire a woman, a man who is going anything that I've mentioned that you know what, you can survive. 
I conquered, you can also conquer. This is the reason why I told my story, not for pity. Which goes to the second question. What is different about black and white guy sex? Okay, guys, like seriously, whoever sent this question, yeah. Oh my God. So what is different? Uh, I can only speak for myself, you know. I can, I'm not here to speak for any interracial couples or any black couples, you know. It's, I, I can only speak for myself, if you understand, because I've dated black guys, but now I'm married to a white guy. So I can say, yes, there are many things that I've seen that are different and only speaking for myself, guys, because when I was back home, you know, I didn't like actually do this blood job things, you understand? But then I got here and I realized that it is a nature story sort of a nature you know for white people that they like it you know and yeah there is a much of a difference in terms of experience in terms of what you guys do sexually and also talking from my experience i realized that with white people you take foreplay into much consideration it takes longer you know you enjoy you know it takes longer than my previous experience with the people that i dated you know it was like two minutes or maybe they use their saliva you know and boom someone is inside already so yeah that is much much different guys that is all that i can say okay let's go to the next question question is do you regret marrying a white guy okay guys so i'm not gonna say i regret marrying my husband because he is a good man whether he was black whether he was white all i look for is a man who will love and treat me with respect you know so yeah i don't regret marrying my husband of course we've got our ups and downs and when we have our downs i look at him and say is this a good person doing a bad thing or is it a bad person doing what uh bad people do and you know, at the end of the day, I know my husband is a good man. So when we have those fallouts, you know, because there are times in marriage where you've got fallouts and sometimes you feel like giving up. I ask myself those questions. And once I found the answer that he is a good man, you know, maybe we have done a bad thing. We sit down, we talk, we move on. Here we are, you know, six years later. When we first got married, I remember people like, oh, they're not going to last a year. They're not going to last two years. You know, but here we are, you know. So no, I don't regret marrying my husband at all. Your racism experience still stuck with you. So I'm not going to say it still stuck with me, but I can say, I look back and say, I took it as a learning curve because uh, I think it's different when you hear about racism and when it actually happens to you. The experience is different. So when I was back home in Zimbabwe, you know, I knew about racism, but until I got to the UK and it happened to me, that is when I was like, so this thing is real. And you know, it happened a few months when I got here, when I was still homesick, when I even settled, you know how you feel when you have moved into a new country altogether and you only have no one else there except the man that you are in love with that made you to that made you you know to move miles away to come and be with him so when it happened you know it was a lot for me to check in because everything happened so fast i was still homesick crying every day because i miss my family then boom you go out you're now being called a baboon you're being called a monkey you have to go back to the jungle so it was a lot for me to take in and though I still experience it today, you know, it doesn't have the same effect that it did when I first got here. Because those who saw my video also, you realize that I said I completely broke down. I became depressed. It affected my marriage. I wanted to go home. It was a lot to take in, you understand? Though I still experience it every day right now, you know, but at the end of the day, for me, it's not, it doesn't bother me that much, you know, as it used to. I look back and say, you know what? It did crush me, but I was able to pick myself up and I'm proud that I was able to pick myself up. So let's go to the next question. What is your greatest wish? So my greatest wish is that we love each other, you know, without looking at the color of the person, you know, without saying this person is black, this person is white. I think the world would be a better place if we just looked at each other as human beings, you know, not um, 
based on the color of my skin, which also like um, goes with my greatest wish. If I had the power to do anything in this world, I would change the color of the people and make them to have one color. Because I think that is where racism and hate begins just because of the color of the skin. We, we tend to judge people based on the color of the skin, which I also share, you know, the same dream that the late Martin Luther King uh, shared. He said, I wish that one day I will not be judged by the color of my skin, but by the content of my character. So, you know, this is something that I also wish as um, a woman, as a person, as a human being, that, you know, we all look at each other as human beings without pointing fingers that, oh, she's black, he is black, she's white, you know, without all of these things, without any racism. Okay, what is the most thing you hate about yourself? Okay, the most thing that I hate myself is letting myself down. This like really scares me, especially when I look back at some of the mistakes that I've done that have let myself down. Like what I always say on my videos is in this world, don't be the reason that you is unhappy, that you is broken. So this is my greatest fear. When I make mistakes, I feel like, oh my God, I've let myself down. If I let myself down, then Who's going to pick me up? If you understand what I mean, I feel like I should be the source of my happiness. I should be the source of my joy. I should be the source of my success, but I don't want to be the source of my failure. This scares me like a lot, a lot. Okay. The next question. What advice do you have for women in abusive relationships? This is so easy guys. I can say to you, the ball is in your hands. For that situation to change, it is in your hands. It's for you to just say, you know what? I'm going to put my feet on the ground and say enough is enough. And I'm going to leave this man, go out there. And I know there is a man out there who is ready to welcome a princess, to welcome a queen and treat her like a queen. Because that is what you deserve. And this is like the best advice that I always give people because I was that I was in that situation and I made a decision to walk away and it was the best decision ever. I know you might be difficult for you to heal, but I can tell you that no matter how long it's going to take, you're going to heal. So don't be scared to leave a toxic relationship and, you know, go out there and start a new life. Even if you don't find a man yet, take your time. Heal, focus on yourself, be a better version of yourself and then look, you know, for someone else. But I believe that once you are the best version of yourself, once you know your value, you know, once you know your value as a woman, the sky is the limit. Do you have kids? No, guys, we don't have kids yet. We've been trying, but unfortunately it hasn't happened for us yet. And we're still waiting, you know, only God gives kids, so... In God's time, you know, everything will be fine. It living in the UK. It's okay. Like, it's got its good sides and its bad side. I hate the weather. <laughs> the weather is the problem. Like, I really don't like the weather here. But, you know, nonetheless, I'm with the man of my dreams, you know. So, he kind of, like, support me whenever I'm down. You know, whenever I feel homesick, whenever I've, I'm craving the sun. You know, he's there to hold my hands and say, you know what, babe? few few months ago we'll be back home because we go back home like every year maybe now we're not gonna go because of the corona but yeah it is okay living here of course i miss home but you know as a person you've got to make a choice and stand by it and i made a choice to come here so i'll stand by it okay so the last question was is it true that your friend once slept with their man <laughs> Oh my God. Um, okay, whoever asked this question, I believe that you know me personally because I got this question from a ghost account. So I believe it's someone who knows me. And yes, my friend did sleep with my ex on the same bed. So we went out drinking and when we were drinking, you know, I always say people to people, you have to trust your gut because 
I always knew something was going on, but I just didn't have the proof. So what we did is we went clubbing, you know, so we had uh, drinks and I had a few drinks, you know, and I pretended to be drunk earlier, you know, because I know like when I'm drunk, this is what I do. So I started to do those things, but it was a, like I wanted them to, I wanted, I wanted to see if they're going to do something. Then we go back home and uh, I pretend to fall asleep, you know, and the next thing I hear sounds, you know, you know, everything. So I woke up and then I was like, oh, I knew something was going on, but I just didn't have the proof. But now I've got the proof. And you know what, guys, you can carry on. And yeah, that's how it happened. And I learned a lot, which is um, maybe something that I'm going to say on my next video is the tips that you can or the tricks or whatever we call it, guys, that you can see that someone is into your man or your man is into your friend, you know, because I have lived it. So I know, you know, the atmosphere. So it's something that I'm going to share, you know, so that you also look out for yourself. So, yeah, I was so shocked. I was hurt. But at the same time. It became a learning curve for me. And now, believe me, I don't want that kind of behavior near my husband. I'm going to kill someone. I don't want any kind of thing thing near my husband. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for watching. So, I hope that now you know a bit about this face. You know a bit about me. And I wish to know a bit about you also. So that, you know, we just don't become YouTube people, you know. We also become friends. I would love to make friends, you know, especially those who stay in the UK. You know, so that we can get to go out, have a girls out. You know, those kind of stuff, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much and you can um maybe reach out to me on facebook i'll put everything on my link down below even the videos that i did mention you know about my abuse about my racism i'm gonna put all of the links uh, down on this video so thank you so much guys for watching until next time take care love you bye